What should you do if you encountered a black bear? Run away as fast as you can? Climb the nearest tree? Actually, neither. Stay tuned because Master Wildlife Conservationist Ginny Apple will tell you all about black bears during her visit to the DM Hunt Library in Falls Village. How many of you have seen a black bear in Connecticut? <laughs> Almost everybody? How many have seen black bears? How, you know, in total, all of them. Every, anywhere. Zoo, Yellowstone, wherever. Okay. How many have seen a grizzly and not a black bear? That, that's what I guess if you're out at a national park or something, right? Okay, all right. So, well, we got a healthy uh, we got a he healthy black bear population here in Connecticut. We don't have grizzly bears. There's no grizzly bears uh, west uh, east of the Mississippi. Um, there aren't that many in Colorado. They're pretty much more in the far west, but there are some in Colorado, but not too many. They're mostly like far west and north. So like in Yellowstone, you know, Montana, all those states like that. So I'm glad to see some young person here, a couple today. We don't a lot of times get them at our wildlife talks and, and in our day and time as we can as we all know it's very important to get our youth involved with the, things like the environment, wildlife, uh, that's their salvation for the future and ours as well, so that's my only political statement, but uh, I really care about animals and the environment, and I, I think uh, we can read, when I covered the uh, 84 Olympics, I remember they had to postpone a lot of events in L.A. because there was so much smog, and at the same time on the other coast in New York was, some, you know, enveloped in smog, and now, you know, when you look at those cities, very, very rarely, unless we have, like, really weird fog and hot weather, we don't see the smog. So clearly something happened to cause that. So anyway. The black bear is pretty reticent, reticent, pretty shy. Only gets bold when he suspects food, when people leave bird feeders out. That's really mostly the only time they have really aggressive behavior. You hear the story, and we'll go through this, about don't get between a mother and her cubs. Not so true with black bears, very true with grizzly bears. Black bears, <coughs> all she'll do, that sow, as soon as she perceives any kind of danger, and it can even be the wind. It's amazing how black bears can be scared by gusts of wind. She'll send her cubs up at the nearest tree. Then she knows there's no danger to them because she figures if anything's going to try to climb there, she'll climb first underneath them. So, uh, And we'll talk about what to do when you encounter a bear later. Okay. <laughs> And bears are mythical creatures, they're much maligned, uh, they, they're considered bloodthirsty and often lying in wait for unsuspecting hikers. Now even grizzlies aren't lying in wait for unsuspecting hikers. What often, often happens with grizzlies is hikers are coming along and round the corner, you know, and there's a grizzly. That's generally what happens. Wildlife will follow people on trails because why would I want to crash through the forest if there's a trail there? So a lot of times in Maine I've been hiking out near dusk and I'll turn around there's a moose following me, you know, so, you know, you do that out in the woods sometimes, you'll see some critters behind you, okay, or they can be a big, cuddly, often lazy creature who laughs, sings, and plays with us. Look for the bare necessities, the simple bare necessities, forget about your worries and your stress. Uh, I always laugh because whenever anybody says they had a bear in their yard, they always say it's 400 pounds. Now, why they pick that number, I don't even know. And a lot of the times, it's probably not 400 pounds. I mean, if you look at this fur, you know, this is a, and y'all can come look at it later. I mean, this is a, I mean, this is a pretty big fur, so 300 pounds at least. So. Our bears probably average females would go from about 120 to around 250 in the fall. They might go over 300 because they're eating a lot of acorns and getting ready for hibernation. Uh, this is a habitat uh, rating of the best habitat. The best <coughs> habitat is dark green. You guys obviously are up towards the left. Uh, 
anyway, you guys are, you know, best habitat and good habitat. Uh, the middle and the shoreline, not so good. That's along the Connecticut River where there's a lot of uh, houses built. And then down on the shoreline, there's just too much traffic, too much stuff going on. And bears, even if there's food attractants, they have some kind of sense, you know. I mean, I wouldn't want to cross 95 either. And they, <laughs> they don't try, although we did have one hit on... Uh, somewhere in North Haven, you know, so there was one down there that was hit by a car, unfortunately. We have about 68 bears a year hit by cars and killed that we know of. We think we have between seven and 800 bears. It's hard to tell. You know, they do sky surveys. They have sows collared, so they have different measures of trying to gauge it. Uh, they can live up to 50 years in captivity, oh, wow. but only probably 20, 25 would be old for a bear in the wild because they get hit by cars usually would be their ultimate demise. We had, did have one bear with rabies in my town, very rare because they're very rugged. They're very resistant to most disease. So the males can be up to 600 pounds. We do have, you know, quite a few that are pretty healthy. They generally are bears out here, not bird feeding bears. I mean, they're bears that live out, they're eating the skunk cabbage in the spring, they're, they're, they might eat some little critter in the spring because they're really hungry when they come out from hibernation. So, you know, they're pretty well fed. All right, so a sow can weigh between 100 and 300 would be in the fall. And then again, this is at birth, the cubs weigh less than a pound and they're blind. So they're totally dependent on their mother. They go right under their mother to keep warm and um, Hope survived the younger barn in January, early February, although we see things changing a little with the warming of the weather because uh, they're going in later, you know, to hibernate. So it hasn't impacted their birth time too much yet, but we expect it might. They can have one to five cubs. Five is very rare. Uh, in Connecticut, ours is about average at 2.5. I always laugh when they say that, but you know what I mean? When they do all those numbers, there's always a half in there. So. Uh. <laughs>
you know, it looks like it's been dug up. They eat larvae, they eat insects. You know, it's amazing what little things they eat. And you think, how can a big bear even, you know, how is that sustenance? But if they eat enough of it, um, they, um, they can get that. So you can look for that, evidence of that. Okay, but when, when their early food appears, they're happy bears. Their favorite food is skunk cabbage. <laughs> One day I was about to go to work and I had all these dandelions in my yard and I'm like, huh, I guess I got to mow. So, uh, but I saw one bear was eating a dandelion. So, oh, she likes a dandelion. When I came home, there were no dandelions in my yard. So that bear had gone around <laughs> eating dandelions. So, and dandelions, I guess, are good for your health. They're antioxidants or something, I think. So. They like all kinds of fruits. So, but you know, some bears like they're like us. You know, some people like. I only like apples in the fall when they're when they're ripe. You know, I don't like them any other time. They'll eat they'll eat peaches and stuff. So, if you're concerned about a bear hanging around your yard, just pick up your fallen fruit. You know, and you can always just take that out in the woods. So anyway, they love honey, and so if you have beehives uh, like this, this uh, you know this is a not so well protected beehive. There's a lot of beehives there. That smell is going to attract the bears. So here is a well protected beehive uh, that's got solar panels there for the electric fencing. Now I'm not saying that stops every single bear, but you know it does does stop a great amount on This is what happened to that first one. You know, the bear came in and just had a big feast. So, you know, they, that person had a lot of work to do. Anyway, so we're going to go a few myth and reality. Once a bear has tasted human food, it won't eat wild food anymore. True or false? False. False. They're like goats. They eat everything. I mean, when they raid a garbage can, the bad thing is they will eat the paper and everything. So whatever's in your garbage can, they'll they'll go ahead and munch down on. The bear in the fall has to eat between twenty to thirty thousand calories a day. Usually thirty thousand for females. That's equivalent to thirty five Big Macs. So a day. So you can imagine. Okay. We're talking about hibernation, and believe it or not, that's a bear hibernating down at the bottom of that tree. Black bears, unlike what Hollywood likes to tell you, they don't generally hibernate in caves because they only have one way to escape. There's no side escape, so they don't like to be all enclosed in, particularly the mothers. Uh, we have had some in caves, but very, very few. <clears throat> so anyway, that is a that's a bear. You can see her collar there. So that she just took a slag pile and decided to, uh, to hibernate under there. She'll make a little nest. This one right there was ha had new cubs right there. We went to the nest. And you think when you go then and when you go to get little cubs and hold them, they're, you know, by the time we get there, they're probably six pounds. You know, they're just tall. They got really long claws. So you think they're like going to claw you to death, but no, they just want to be warm because they've been under their mother the whole time. So all they want to do is snuggle up. Our back, black bears start hibernating anywhere from mid-November to early December, although that's changing. It's kind of climate, uh, climate controlled. Uh, so last year we had a lot of bears not going in until later. That is a den right there. Uh, bears are not true hibernators. They go in a state of torpor, so their temperature will lower, their heartbeat will lower. They don't have to defecate. They don't have to eat. Uh, but if they had to get up and run, they could just get up and run. You know what I mean? Unlike like a chipmunk or garter snakes or some other critters that are totally hibernators. But yet she gives birth while she's... Yeah, oh she gives that, birth, she's, she's semi-awake and she keeps them underneath her and knows how not to smush them. You know, it's pretty amazing. Yeah. Alright, so... There is a time when they hunker down and then their internal clocks tell them it's time to come out. Then in the spring, it's every bear for him or herself. They go out trying to find all, any food. We found people that have chicken coops that will feed their chickens and leave the bag of chicken scratch in the pen. You know, rather than taking it into a building. Mm -hmm. So, of course, that's not only going to attract bears, that's going to attract raccoons and, you know, other critters as well, so. Again, 
don't feed between late March and mid-November if you want to keep the bears safe. And also you're attracting other animals to your yard. You're attracting fox, you're attracting mm -hmm. raccoons, uh, other animals that could be uh, vectors for rabies. You know, it's really just not a good idea. The birds don't need it. There's many native plants. You can go on the DEP website and, and search for native plants. There's many native plants that will bring you many more species of birds than any bird seed will. And, uh, you know, they're beautiful. They have flowers, you know, and uh, they're good for insects. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> all right, so sniffing is another thing. They're, they're really good. Their sense of smell is up to 200 times that of ours. So, you know, if you feed your dogs on your deck, and you leave the dish there and it's completely dry as far as you know, a bear can smell that from a mile or two away and think there's food there. Wow. You know, so. Bears have, male bears can have territories up to 50, 60 miles, females about 10 to 12. The, the sows will allow their offspring female to stay in their territory, but not the males. They kick them out and if they come back, they chase them. And believe me, most males are afraid of the sows. I mean, the sows rule the bear world, so, <laughs> sorry guys. <laughs> okay. uh, they can live up to 50 years in captivity, oh, wow. but only probably 20, 25 would be old for a bear in the wild because they get hit by cars usually would be their ultimate demise. We had, did have one bear with rabies in my town, very rare because they're very rugged, they're very resistant to most disease. All right, so I got to tell you about the pie-eating bear in my town. So you see that those steps go up to a door, which is the kitchen, and there's a window to the kitchen. So this lady had baked an apple pie, and then she had to go out for a few minutes. She left her window up, so the screen, you know, had the smell of the pie and everything. This is a yearling. It smelled it, so it went up the steps, went in the window, ate the pie, ate all the the peel, you know, stuff in the sink. A little dog was right there barking away. The bear didn't care about the, the dog. The bear then leaps through the window. Go ahead, you'll see this. And uh, back through the, the neighbors heard the dog barking. That's how I got these photos. And then next one you'll see the screen. On the so he came back, back out and then just left, you know. And so, of course, the DP looked for him because he went in the house and they felt, you know, but they didn't find him, so I was happy about that. <laughs> okay, so bears are unpredictable. True or false? Black bears. True. It's only true to the degree that they're a wild animal, but they really have pretty predictable behavior. You know, if they're not habituated to, you know, people food and stuff like that. They are wild animals, so they're going to do things in civilization that cause trouble, but, you know, we can pretty well live with them. You know, I live with mine, and they, you know, I don't feed any, I don't put any food out, um, and they hang around, you know, on their little roots, and uh, they've never messed a window up, or, you know, done, of course I don't cook much, but <laughs> <laughs> anything. So it's, you know, we really have to try to respect their world, and, and, you know, hopefully they respect ours, so. How many bears do you have by your property where you live? Well, I have three saws, sows that have, I'm on their circuit, but I have, Probably like all of you, I mean, I probably, I may have had 15 different individual bears pass through over this year, you know. But, and this one I call Valentino. To me, that was the most beautiful bear I've ever seen, you know. I just thought he was so handsome. And I was shooting through my window, but I think he must have seen me because it looks like he's posing. So. Right. <laughs> right. Okay. All right, myth of reality, when you see a bear, you should hightail it and run. A black bear we're talking about. Well, it, no, you don't run from a grizzly either. You don't run from either, so. They run 30 miles an hour, sometimes 35 possibly, so. Uh, if, you see a, if you see a black bear, say I'm hiking along a trail, and all of a sudden I'm like, oh, there's a black bear. Hey, how you doing? So you talk to it. Like Ben Killam, who's written about bears, he, he, he takes orphan bears and raises them to go back in the wild. He says, J just really talk to them, you know, very calmly. And uh, then if they start moving towards you a little, you know, make yourself large, make a lot of noise, you can do jumping jacks, whatever. If they get a little closer, then just throw stuff at them. And by that time, they're probably going to leave. You know, they don't want anything to do with you. Okay, so when you're on hiking again, like I said, you want to just stop and let it go on its way. They generally will. Jenny, I have to say thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you.
have neighbors you need to give some advice to. These two will do that. So, all right. So I guess I'll see some of you in November.